Yeah, Cordelia, you can join the uh, live stream only uh, chat. Should be underneath the waiting room. A couple tabs down. Or a couple spaces down. Uh, the music hello? fucks. Yeah, it's good. Hi, what's up? Hey, it's been a while since we talked. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. <sighs> so, um, uh, I have a thing that's been on my mind a lot lately uh, has been... Like, on one end, a need to sort of see myself in a tradition of lots of people who did politics. Like, reading about, I don't know, uh, uh, Paul Maddock. Uh -huh. and, it, and saying, like, oh, wow, I am in this tradition. I relate to this. Versus a need to sort of say, I don't follow any tradition, actually. I am sort of divorcing myself from these old traditions and like breaking away to something new entirely and sort of I was curious uh, about how you see yourself in mm. terms of like the history of leftism like do you see yourself like uh, as part of a historical movement or as like an individual who just happens to be engaging with some of these things from time to time I guess that's a good question huh um I yeah, try not to flatter myself too much by associating myself with anything grander, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm prone to bouts of healthy narcissism. You see, uh, I, I, have, I have that too, except, importantly, I don't, like, look at Lenin and say, like, damn, I see myself in that tradition of, like, the head of Marxism. Instead, I look at, like... I was reading a text by a really obscure, not really obscure, a Trotskyist named Max Schachtman. Uh, and in it, it's just him going through a bunch of like really, really tiny microsects that split off from the Socialist Workers' Party before the 1940s. Uh huh. So some of these sects contained three people, one of them contained one person. Uh, and he was just going through all of them and kind of making fun of them. And as I was reading it, he was saying like, oh yeah, the Bordigas split from us first. They, uh, you know, basically just have a reading group. Ha <laughs> uh, the, uh, the next to split from us was the Leninist League uh, that changed its name to the Friends of the Revolution. Uh, uh, the plural of friends there doing the same work as the Royal We. Like, stuff like that. And as I was reading it, I was like, damn, I, I see myself in this tradition. Uh, of calling each of, other out and starting drama? Of calling each other out, of starting drama, of <laughs> niche microsects reading groups that are like, uh, have no real power, no real sway, no real organization, but are still trying to like, grapple with and understand these texts. Uh, uh, but I also feel like that's just kind of a hipster version of thinking you're the next Lenin. Uh, in some ways. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, like, I I heard a great, um, quote on, of all things, on Chapo. It was Matt Chrisman, who is a mm -hmm. really, I think, interesting thinker. Um, oh, I love him. Yeah. And he talked about a post, someone else brought it up. Um, a post from somebody who said something to the effect of like, you know, I'll vote for Bernie and I'll also overthrow oh. him when the revolution comes. You may have that was, seen that going around when it happened. You're yet. not going to, you're not going to believe this. That was a non-compete tweet. Really? It Wait, it was. Oh my God. <laughs> I remember I saw the screenshot recently. I'm not sure if Matt Christmas was talking about that exact one because there are a ton there were tons of uh Yeah, there were a few like that. That were yeah. That were doing that kind of thing. And I remember having that exact sentiment too in like twenty seventeen. I uh, I have that sentiment if you take that to mean um you know, I could go 
either way I might support something that's more reformative, but I would like something more, you know, if, that, if that's what you mean by that. But the thing about non-compete is that that's not all that he means. Because that is, yeah. he does literally believe like socialism in our lifetime is possible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not in, as they say, the imperial core. But uh, he definitely seemingly believes it's possible in other countries. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's that's very interesting. But what Crispin said oh, yeah. is that it's, it's just flattery, that statement. Because mm -hmm. it's like projecting yourself onto the future so that you don't have to accept the reality that you'll see that you'll end up like being seen <laughs> as yet another person who didn't do enough in history you know yeah yeah absolutely uh like what i remember about that sentiment and i was like in non-competes community sort of at that time i was one of the early watchers i guess uh and i've told you the story about me uh, before I where i uh responded to a tweet of the of theirs uh with sort of a screenshot of a Krupp Hotkin article I had been reading. Uh-huh. And uh it was an article where Krupp Hotkin argued that uh central planning is unnecessary. Uh that you can have decentral planning. And the example Krupp Hotkin uses is the railway system in Europe that is decentrally planned. Uh like between a bunch of different corporations. Right. And this is a bad example, but, and it doesn't support Kropotkin's argument well, but like, whatever. That's the argument he was making. Uh -huh. uh, Non-compete then uh, quotes from the same article mm -hmm. in a video made almost right after that interaction where he liked that tweet of mine, uh, but, mis but misinterprets it uh, to sit to uh, enshrine the firm as continuing to exist under anarchism and contracts between firms continuing to exist under anarchism. And that's probably yeah. some of where he got that stuff that he puts in his videos about um, contracts being enforced by the anarchist like military. Yeah. Yeah. And I, what what really interested me about that is, I mean, it was discouraging at the time <laughs> because I watched the video and was like, oh, this guy I thought was smart misinterpreted a thing that I tweeted at him and has gone in a weird direction with it. But uh, what really got me was that, like, sorry, I've kind of gone a little off subject. No, it's fine. From the initial subject. My ADHD meds are starting to wear off. <laughs> Listen, you have all the time in the world. This is this, tonight's all about you guys. Okay, nice. <sighs> so, it it was very discouraging because uh, he was wrong in a way that you could only be wrong if you actually did read the text and misinterpret it. And that's <coughs> a lot of what I get from non-compete is. Non-compete is wrong in a lot of very specific ways that would be hard to to get to if you didn't at least read the text. Uh, yeah, it's um well it's interesting. Except for some Marx stuff that I, I don't know where he's getting it from. Well, yeah, it's I, I think some of the stuff on Marx, he's pretty clearly reading secondary sources. Mm-hmm. Um which I don't approve of, by the way, citing secondary sources for inf info on, like, primary sources. Mm-hmm. <sighs> uh, yeah. Back to the initial question a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Uh, About being part yeah. of an intellectual tradition or some, some other stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, is, is super right when he talks about that being flattery, <laughs> and I think we kind of internally should watch out a little bit uh, for like uh, I, I'll, I'll say your audience is a lot of more like dissident left or ultra left, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I I don't know. I mean, I. 
I've, I've, I have once been called an ultra. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but I'm I think, not sure it was a compliment. I think for, for sort of myself as an ultra leftist, uh, uh, there, there's a reverse form of flattery where it's like, oh, I won't be like significant. I won't be part of a movement that I'll see in my lifetime, but uh, I'm right and I'm more right than the people who think they are. And because of that, I am sort of part of the tradition of people who are right. You know, <laughs> Duave and, and Matic and Bordiga, we're, we're right. And that's our tradition. And I feel like uh, just a, a little self critique, but also a critique I'm sort of in inviting people in the audience who vibe with it to engage with too. Uh, uh, don't be so uh, concerned with being more right with uh, than other leftists, uh, even if you are. <laughs> like, obviously, I think I'm right on things, but uh, I want to try and not, like, uh, uh, make myself feel any like superior to an ML who uh, in reality is in the exact same place as me. No political power, no uh, like broad movement where I am that I'm participating in. No chance at enacting any of my ideas or goals. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't believe in taking political action against MLs in any significant degree mm -hmm. because I think that like actual like fascist fascists are just like infinitely more dangerous um not that actually... not that you can't make some sort of argument about mls but you know what i mean when i say that i know what you mean um i'm actually writing an article on uh uh fascism that does have a little bit of a hot take on marxist leninists in it well, feel free to link it to me when you write it. It's about three quarters of the way done. I did it. I'm doing it for there. There's like a a guy on Twitter, Five Scythe, who calls himself like a Bolshevik Leninist. Hmm. He's trying to start a magazine. <laughs> uh, and I am doing. I am helping because I happen to have a little bit of experience. So. Well, that's good. Uh, it's it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if anything will come of that, but it's fun. But the article I'm writing for it uh, uh, is uh, sort of trying to craft a theory of what fascism is within capitalism. How does it develop? Uh, and in doing that, uh, I kind of come to the conclusion that uh, fascism develops... Uh, uh, in the same way that uh, any social movement develops to overthrow like a sitting government. Like, that there's sort of vaguely like a set way that the, that that, that it, organizations coalesce to take power away from uh, democratic uh, bourgeois democratic I guess, right. government. I've written, I, I've shared it with only a couple people. I've written some material on Do something wrong. Uh, fascist we'll ideology. About you and me, mm -hmm. not knowing your response and when we first met. Then I go into what makes German. fascism sort of unique German. among German. like German. Uh, movements to overthrow democracy German. or bourgeois German. democracy. That was years ago, Veronica. And fuzzy on it. Uh, details. Uh, the hot take about Marxist-Leninists is that uh, because they, for the most part, preserve capitalism in their revolutions, the main difference between Marxist-Leninists and uh, fascists then is just the degree of separation in their social beliefs. Uh, Say that last bit again about their social beliefs, the main difference. I appreciate the concern. Uh, like the degree of separation between their social beliefs, like how different they are, which is very important. It's not to say it's like a small difference. 
Uh, uh, hmm. Just that, uh, in many ways, they have the same economic program. Yeah, well, in a, in a, there's a degree of variation, but a lot of MLs oh, are yeah. social hygienists, I think, not without yeah. uh, precedent. I, I give I give room where I say like, or in the article, I'm like, I'm not calling all MLs fascist. I'm saying that like, if we're using the definition of fascism that I've outlined based on these citations, then uh, the the main thing making MLs not fascists uh, is just whatever degree of social progressivism they are invested in. Which, like you said, does matter. Well, the thing yes. that I was going to say earlier is I I mentioned that, like, how do I phrase it? Um, that I think I don't a approve of, like, taking a ton of... I mean, it, it depends on your uh, material conditions, Ooh, but I... I don't, I don't generally, in the context of my country, approve of people fantasizing about like any kind of act, taking any kind of action against Marxist Leninists. And I don't think that that would be constructive. I do, I, however, yeah. I say that because I'm leading into um, the fact that I, I think I might hate MLs more than fascists, <laughs> because based on the ones that I've talked to, a lot of, I mean, you can get people from every ideology that are stupid. But, like, I tend to hate people who are, like, really stupid. Yeah. You ever talk to somebody and it's just like, you are unteachably stupid. You are... Oh, I, sure. I feel Absolutely. bad even reproaching you for not understanding something. You are mm -hmm. impossible. That's how I feel talking to a lot of MLs. A lot yeah, of fascists, I... you get them to a certain point in a conversation and they just kind of go, yeah, I just don't like Jews. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, mm -hmm. that's evil which is bad, and that's why I oppose it, in particular. I've had very interesting interactions with both fascists and uh, MLs. One time I was smoking weed with some of my ML friends, and one of them started looking at a portrait of Stalin that was in the room, because there was a portrait of Stalin in the room, started crying and said, I'm not a good enough revolutionary. Uh, and was like looking at the portrait like he wouldn't be proud of me and I'm like that's that's that is actually just Freudian damn <laughs> that is yeah I can't believe I've disappointed father yeah <laughs> which uh, uh, honestly especially the ones who are my friends like I have a few ML friends like three uh mostly just makes me want to like try and talk them out of it very caringly yeah i mean i'll be friends with people of any ideology but it's it's hard for me to be friends with a lot of conservatives for example oh for sure because yeah. and i'm not talking fascists who yeah. I, I think tend to be very malicious but i'm talking mm -hmm. like a lot of conservatives are deeply stupid people like casual conservatives, conservatives who don't play on competitive servers, basically. Um, oh, believe me, I have to. I still live with my parents, so. If you've told me, you've told me things. Mm hmm. There is. I, I do love the story about. Uh, I was in a leftist club at my local community college. I still am. But you used to be, too. That's right. Yeah, right? Okay, but uh, uh, a guy showed up uh, and called to, to this club and called himself an anti-imperialist conservative. Okay. And we Infrared. were like, okay. Yeah, we were like, okay, fine, whatever. Uh, and uh, I, I just, I happened to be talking with him right after the club and uh, and he name drops Evola. Uh, and I say, oh, you just name dropped Evola. And he's like, oh yeah, do you know Evola? I'm like, yeah, this, the super fascist. The guy who said, I am not a fascist, I am a super fascist. Of course I know. <laughs> uh, and he yeah, was like, sure uh, oops. And I was like, oh, so you're a fascist and you're like trying to infiltrate us? We're like seven people. We. 
back then the head of the club was an Assadist and we were doing pro Syria protests <laughs> and that was it. Uh, so I see your message, by the way, Blossoming Desire. Thank you. I'll keep my eye on it. I saw your pod hit. Okay, I, I am going to be done pretty soon. See That's any more okay. Come down? Ah, negative. Uh, but I didn't see much. I want to hear the rest of this story. Uh, so yeah, I, I end up, uh, like having a having very long Listen, ideological conversations bills, with this fascist. This like identifying as a fascist. I discovered that uh, his grandfather was in the Batista regime and fled to Francoist Spain. Ah. Uh... Uh, which is interesting on a couple levels. Uh, Batista actually had very poor relations with Francoist Spain, uh, while Castro actually had very good relations with Francoist Spain. It's very confusing. Uh, uh, but the, the point was, uh, uh, he, he came from like a fascist family, which was wild. It is wild. And so we're having all these conversations. Uh, and eventually I, I get to a point where I'm like, where I'm like, I, I know every reaction you're going to have to any, any like given historical thing, because I know you just worship power. You don't have any other beliefs beyond that. And he said, and he, he looked up and he thought for a while and then he said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which incredible might makes it, right more like might makes me wet yeah exactly just uh, uh, open naked uh, uh, worship veneration of power for its own sake uh, oh man uh, so close. Yeah, it's that that's a red flag in a human being to me. Yeah. Uh eventually uh uh eventually he start he he was uh down. like down. harassing a lot of the women in the clubs mm. with like uh uh by like sitting next to them, not saying anything, and then slowly leaning closer into them. Oh, yeah. And we, we got him banned from basically every club. Uh, for, Sorry about your luck, back. guy, but it's run out at that point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what would you expect? They're all chauvinists. Oh, for sure. It was, it was fun to keep him around to dunk on. And uh, he... Uh, he ended up joining Patriot Front and was not one of the ones who got doxxed. Uh, I think maybe because that may have accidentally been my doing. Because this guy had no friends, and I told someone who was friends with a person who was friends with a person who was friends with a person who was involved in doxing uh, Patriot Front. And I told them, oh, you shouldn't dox that guy because he has no friends, and they'll just use that to network. <laughs> I mean, isn't that, I guess, what do they call that? Responsible platforming when a streamer does that? Like, don't yeah. respond to this person. They'll just get big off of it. Yeah, exactly. Slow down. Please, slow down. That's fair. Here? Well, I'm glad I could come on and share some stories and have some conversations. <laughs> I am going to, uh, I am going to head off. I've got to, uh, have a good night call with my partner. Of course. Yeah, it was really great talking. Yeah, it was great oh. talking to you too, B. Thank you. Oh, I've started to make some music again. Uh, and I might send you some stuff that you can use as, like, uh, royalty-free music that won't get you struck down for your streams if you need it. Oh, that'd be baller. Yeah, I was gonna message you about a, a collab sometime in the future when I work out my uh, my next plan, my next master yeah. plan. Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, bye. 
Yeah, goodbye. What a good friend. <laughs>